This is Autofocus, the Philippines' premier motor show. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this episode of Electronic Magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two Eagle models presently in the local market, a van from Toyota, the High A Super Grand E Elite, and a mini crossover for Volkswagen, the Cross Santana. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two mini sedans, the Honda Brio RS Blacktop CVT versus the Suzuki Celerio AGS. On Autopedia, we'll talk about the importance of following your vehicle's preventive maintenance schedule. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the BYD China Tour as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Into new heights. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of Electronic Magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Toyota. This edition of Car Review takes a close look at the Toyota High A Super Grandia Elite. Filipinos have a love affair with vans. Over the years, automakers have found success providing vans to families as well as traders and businessmen needing shuttles for passengers or cargo. Then automakers began rolling out vans for mealer utilitarian people carriers to more luxurious and comfortable rides for families, providing vans for the low to the high end of the market. Toyota has a High Ace, a popular vehicle for providers of shuttle services and for families. It has also rolled out the High Ace Super Grandia Elite to cater to the market for higher end luxurious vans. The top of the line high ace projects its imposing size at 5,300mm long, 1,970mm wide, and 1,990mm tall, but nonetheless projects elegance in class. It also comes with a long wheelbase at 3,210mm and clears the ground by a good 175mm. The fascia of the high ace super grandia late looks both classy and modern at the same time with a design that, like profile and rear, should age well. It is modern not only in design but also with exterior features and functions starting with the bi-beam LED headlamps and integrated turn signals and automatic leveling device. The Super Gandhi Elite also comes with LED front fog lamps, headlamp cleaner, rain-sensing wipers in front and intermittent wipers with mist in the rear, rear window defogger with timer, rear roof spoiler and cool 17-inch alloy rims shot in 23560R17 tires. The large sliding doors on both the high A Super Gandhi are powered and making ingress and egress so much more convenient, especially with smart key entry system integrated with the push button start. The interior of the Super Gandhi matches the classy look and elegance of the outside with lots of leather and trim and wood for accents. The cabin has room for 10 in seats and sconce in leather. Up front, the driver enjoys the comfort of a six-way power adjusting seat. The front passengers just slides and reclines. The best and most comfortable seats are in the road just behind the driver, power adjusting captain's chairs with ottoman. Two more captain's chairs are behind those, the rearmost bench seat can accommodate four passengers. All occupants in the van have use of cup holders and bottle holders within easy reach. Toyota counts 21 of these in the Super Gandia Elite. Ambient interior lighting adjusts for color and brightness. Other comfort and convenience features in the Super Gandia Elite include power speed sensing door locks, Power windows for driver and front seat passenger, outside rear view mirrors that power just in a track, 12 volt outlets, 7 USB ports with 6 in the rear for charging devices, sunshades, electrochromatic rear view mirror, and automatic climate control with nano technology that purifies the air and keep the cabin smelling fresh. 
The infotainment system in the Super Gundy Elite features a touchscreen display and plays CD, DVD, MP3, FLAC. It comes with aux port, Bluetooth, T-Link for both Apple and Android mobile phones, K2 technology, and six speakers. While most people employ drivers or vans for families like the High Ace, owners themselves can enjoy driving the Super Gundy Elite. The driver's seat is quite comfortable and well bolstered. Six-way power adjusts and the steering wheel that tilts and telescopes makes it easy to get the perfect driving position. Grab the leather and with wood accents, the steering wheel provides good comfortable grip as well as very convenient buttons and switches for such functions as audio, phone, cruise control, multi-information display. The expansive windshield and large windows provide a great view of traffic road conditions. The Optitron gauge and 4.2-inch TFT display are perfectly placed and easy to read. The leather-covered shift lever is mounted on the dash. The Super Gundy Elite is powered by a 2.8-liter 1GD FTV diesel engine that maxes out at 176 PS at 3,500 RPM and 450 Nm of torque from 1,600 to 2,400 RPM. Made it to a 6-speed automatic transmission that sends power and torque to the rear wheels, the engine is relatively smooth and quiet for a diesel fuel powertrain. The 1,990mm height means the Super Gundy Elite can park in most underground and multi-level parking lots. It is also very maneuverable for a 5,300mm long van with a 3,210mm long wheelbase or perhaps with a relatively tight 5.5m minimum tire turning radius. Variable power steering also allows for light steering feel going slow, great when parking but heavier and safer at speed. The Super Grandia is sure-footed on the road, riding on a suspension system that features McPherson struts in front and four-link coil spring in the rear. The brakes use ventilated discs on front and rear wheels. The high Super Supergandia Elite is equipped with Toyota Safety Sense, advanced safety technologies that include pre-collision system, lane departure alert, adaptive cruise control, and automatic high beam. Adaptive cruise control is particularly helpful in maintaining proper speed limits at tollways. The Super Supergandia comes in standard with other driver assist and safety technologies that give driver confidence on the road. These include anti-lock brake system, vehicle stability control with brake assist, hill start assist, as well as SRS airbags, 3-point seat belts for all 10 occupants, child restraint system with isofix and tether anchors, and Toyota vehicle security system. Is the Toyota High Ace Super Grandia Elite worth the more than 3 million peso price tag? It makes a pretty good case that it is. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track, and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Life should be filled with stories to be liked and loved. Elevate your drive with the new Honda City. Take value and performance to the next level so you can view more places and check into new experiences. With Honda Sensing, you can do all these with peace of mind with its modern design and advanced features. The new Honda City is for those who are ready to step up their game. The new Honda City, elevate your drive. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. Kia Philippines has unveiled the new Celtos at the Ayala Museum, a place where people from all walks of life can appreciate local art and culture. The choice of venue may be a reflection of how Kia wants the Celtos to be a bigger part of the Philippine society with its modern design and advanced technological features. So the new Kia Celtos is a little bit more adventurous. Uh, it has a bigger space, a little longer wheelbase for uh, more comfort. It also boasts our new uh, design uh, aligned to the new CI or uh, image that is movement that inspires. Kia brought in three variants of its popular subcompact SUV, 
the 1.5 LX, the 1.5 EX, and the top of line 1.4 Turbo SX with two new engine options. It also has now a new engine, a more fuel efficient but still powerful engine for the LX and the EX. It's a 1.5 gamma mated into a IVT or an intelligent variable transmission. For the top spec, we have a 1.4 turbo, we call it the SX, and it's mated a 7-speed DCT. Aside from the exterior and interior features, the introductory prices of the new Seltos are also attractive. 1.198 million pesos for the 1.5 LX, 1.288 million for the 1.5 EX, and 1.688 million for the 1.4 Turbo SX. We're excited about the Seltos. It plays in a critical subcompact SUV segment, as Brian has explained. No? Many product enhancements that was made, new powertrain, new exterior, new interior, new added features, and of course the overall value makes it a compelling alternative, a compelling offer in this subcompact SUV segment. So I'd like to ask everyone to visit our Kia showrooms and test drive the new Kia Seltos. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We should take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile malls belong to the same category on Head to Head. This edition of Head to Head pits two Japanese small hatchbacks, the Honda Brio RS Blacktop CVT and the Suzuki Celerio AGS in a spec sheet comparison. Small hatchbacks remain attractive to first-time car buyers looking for practical and economical vehicles for moving about in crowded city streets. Two options are top-of-the-line small hatchbacks from Japanese brands, the Honda Brio RS Blacktop CVT and Suzuki Celerio AGS. The Honda Brio RS Blacktop CVT measures 3811mm long, 1682mm wide, and 1487mm tall with a 2405mm long wheelbase. The Suzuki Celerio AGS measures 3695mm long, 1655mm wide, and 1555mm tall with a 2435mm long wheelbase and 170mm ground clearance. The top-of-line Honda Brio 1.2 RS Blacktop CVT features the RS badge on the piano black front grille and RS design tail lamp, side sill garnish, 15 by 6J RS design alloy wheels wrapped by 185-55 R15 tires, and a black roof. The RS comes with LED headlights, daytime running lights, fog lamps, high mounts top lamp, and parking light. It is also equipped with a bulb type tail lamp. Other exterior features include body color door handles, power adjusting and folding crystal black side door mirrors with integrated turn signal lights, micro type antenna, and tailgate spoiler. The Rio also gets intermittent front wipers with washer and non intermittent rear wipers. The latest Suzuki Celerio comes with black oval grille, body color bumper, multi reflector headlamps, front fog lamps, LED rear combination lamps, rear bumper with reflectors. Other exterior features include two-speed intermittent front wipers with washer, rear one-speed wipers with washer, rear window demister, and body-colored outside mirrors that power adjust and antenna mounted on front roof. The Celerio rides on 15-inch black alloy wheels wrapped by 175-60 R15 tires. 
The five-seater Brio features front seats that slide and recline and come with adjustable headrests. The rear seat back folds and comes with three adjustable headrests. The seats are upholstered in black fabric with red accent. The three-spoke urethane steering wheel tilts but does not telescope and features illuminated audio controls. The dark Brio RS interior features RS design speedometer and metallic inner door handles. The top of the line Brio is equipped with keyless entry system, power windows, speed sensing auto door locks, air conditioning system with a digital display and manual controls. The new Solerio GL comes with a remote control door locks with hazard lamp. The seats for five are upholstered in fabric. The front passenger and driver seats manually adjust four ways. The rear seat back folds 60-40. The three-spoke steering wheel tilts and comes with controls for the audio system. The Solerio dashboard features a large analog speedometer, a small digital tachometer, and an information display that includes fuel consumption and driving range. Other comfort and convenience features include central door locking with the switches on the center console, power windows, air conditioning with pollen filter, front console tray with beverage holder, drink holder on all doors, and a 12-volt accessory socket. The Honda Brio RS is equipped with 7-inch touchscreen audio system with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, USB port, AM FM radio, Android Auto mirroring, and six speakers, including two tweeters. The Solerio comes with a 6.2-inch touchscreen audio unit with an anti-glare touchscreen, WebLink 2.0, Bluetooth and USB connectivity, and plays through speakers on the front and rear doors. The Brio is powered by a 1199cc inline 4-cylinder SOHC IVTEC engine with programmed fuel injection that generates 90 PS at 6000 RPM and 110 Nm of torque at 4800, made it to a continuously variable transmission driving the front wheels. The Brio suspension features McPherson struts with stabilizer in front and torsion beams in the rears. The brakes use ventilated discs in front and drums in the rear. The Solerio GL is powered by a 1.0-liter K10C dual-jet engine that generates 67 horsepower and 89 newton meters of torque. This is mated to Suzuki's Auto Gear Shifter AGS system, an automated manual transmission featuring intelligent shift control actuator. The suspension system uses front McPherson struts and rear torsion beams. The brake system uses ventilated discs in front and leading trailing drums in the rear. Honda equipped the Brio with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution. Rear sensors help with parking. Other standard safety features include dual SRS airbags, four three-point ELR safety belts with pretensioner and one lap belt for the middle passenger in the rear. The driver also gets a seat belt reminder. It also comes with security alarm and immobilizer. Suzuki equipped the Solerio GL AGS with anti-lock brake system, electronic stability program, hill hold control, and engine auto stop start. Also added for safety are three-point ELR seat belts for four, a center lap belt in the rear seat, ISOFIX child seat anchorages, child seat tethers, child-proof rear door locks, dual front airbags, rear parking sensors, and immobilizer. Hatchbacks like the Brio and the Celerio are attractive options for those looking at affordable modes of personal mobility. Zoom UX. Take the lead. Are you into grassroots racing, slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing? Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fixed Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. 
Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily rider weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes, from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. Fix Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services, as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fix Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash fixstopautoservice. Hello, I'm Johan Tiu from Sonax Philippines. We are at LG2 e. Rodriguez and we will be showcasing our new DIY line, the what we call the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. The next one that we're gonna, we're gonna show you how to use is a ceramic ultra slick detailer. So this product is your quick solution to instantly apply a ceramic coating on your car and also instantly clean it. Give it an instant gloss, instant solution for a gloss. So this is very easy to use. So you just spray on a clean microfiber cloth then just apply it on the body of your car. Oh, but make sure your car is also clean and doesn't have any dirt. So after applying, spray some water so you can see the water beading hydrophobic effect instantly. So this product can give you a ceramic coating that could last you around 8 to 16 car washes. So there you go. So that's how easy it is to apply the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. For more information, you can visit our FB page, which is Sonax Page Official our IG page, which is also Sonax PH Official, and TikTok page, which is also Sonax PH Official. So it's very easy to find us. Thank you. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. BYD invited members of the media to Shenzhen to see where its EVs are developed and built and learn about the vision of China's biggest manufacturer of electric vehicles for the future. This special feature also shows them enjoying driving BYD's EVs, including the Ato 3, which was later launched in the Philippines. When we were doing research in the Philippines on BYD products and there were more than 100 Filipinos who actually test drove the, the first batch of Atto 3s, the model we will be introducing at the EV Summit, we were surprised how much the purchase intent grew after customers test drive the vehicle. For, for reference, when they saw the vehicle unbranded you know, before test driving it, purchase intent was less than 40%. After test driving the vehicle, purchase intent doubled to more than 80%. I guess that's when you say there's that innovation that accelerates your inner self. And, and I would like media to experience that technology. And that's why we have brought Philippine media here at the Zuhai International Circuit. We signed the agreement with BYD in August and then late of August we opened the new Quezon Avenue showroom of, of Solar. Since then we have been uh, talking to our partners, to our dealer partners and uh, as I mentioned during our August signing ceremony, it is our intention to have 12 new dealers within the first 12 months. We are well on pace to open 12 new dealers within the first 12 months. As a matter of fact, we are looking at maybe 10 dealers uh, within the year you know, operating to support the BYD models. Aside from the current models uh, being sold by Solar, the Han, the Tang, and the Dolphin, we will be introducing the Ato 3 at the EV Summit on October 19th. It's, this will not be the last BYD model, and in 2024, we will be introducing more BYD models. The significance of uh, the introduction of the uh, Ato 3 would also be the start of our offer of CCS2 charging uh, system. 
for all the BYD models to be sold in the Philippines, which is more international standard and, and not the domestic uh, China GBT uh, charging uh, protocol. One of the myths surrounding EVs is about the, the very prohibitive cost. It's expensive no, to, to own an EV. But in reality, the total cost ownership of an electric vehicle has now become very affordable. As you know, this year, government has come out with regulations that allowed us to import uh, electric vehicles without import duties, without excise tax, and, and that has significantly brought down the cost of EVs. We are looking at the uh, image price of about $2 million for the Auto 3, you know, and the final pricing will be announced at the EV Summit. We are looking at also more affordable pricing uh, for the Dolphin. If you now compare the total cost of ownership you know, within five years, an EV would be costing you the same, if not lower, than the equivalent ICE. It's just now a matter of us educating the consumer on the affordability of owning an EV. It's just a matter of us now educating the consumer to eliminate range anxiety. The, the products now, the Auto 3, will, will come in with a range of 500 kilometers. We will sell it together with home charging solutions. So you can charge your Auto 3 at home once a week, if not even once every two weeks, and use it as your daily drive. Of course, we recognize that in the beginning, our consumers maybe will not be the one car family. They, they would have two, three, three cars. No? But we are very confident that the BYD products they'll be purchasing will be their daily drive. And, and that's why we, we are looking at democratizing it. By next year, we will introduce even more affordable uh, BYD models. The BYD Shenzhen experience lends confidence to proponents of EVs that the future of mobility is electric. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. This car review takes a look at the Tucson, Hyundai's entry to the local compact SUV segment. It's now difficult to stand out in a very crowded compact SUV segment. Some do it with looks. Others offer practicality and utility more promised comfort and convenience. Many tout advanced driver assist and safety features. Most offer all these in varying degrees to reach targeted buyers for their SUVs at attractive price points. Where does the all-new Tucson fit the crowded compact SUV market? Hyundai brought in the all-new Tucson after it has already reaped accolades and rave reviews and achieved some success in other markets overseas. Hyundai sought to reap the same success locally, bringing in two variants of the all-new Tucson, the 2.0 CRDI GLS Plus 8 automatic transmission and the 2.0 GLS 6 AT. At 4,630mm long, 1,865mm wide and 1,665mm tall, with a 181mm ground clearance and 2,075mm long wheelbase, the latest generation Tucson can easily stand out among competitors with its sharply delineated character lines. 3D parametric style grille with jewel-like surfaces in dark chrome beefy fenders with what Hyundai describes as angulated wheel arches. Both the 19-inch alloy rims of the GLS Plus and the 18-inch alloy rims of the GLS also stand out when compared to those on the competition. Quite notable in the Tucson is how the LED daytime running lights seem to be part of the grille only visible once turned on. The turn indicator lights also get the same ingenious parametric lighting treatment. 
The multi-phase reflector headlamps are framed at the end of the bumper. They come with auto light function. The rear combination light design uses the same principles as in the front to come up with a distinctive, instantly recognizable look for the new Tucson. Also notable is how Hyundai seemingly incorporated its logo into the rear glass window while ingeniously hiding the wipers under the rear spoiler with high mount stoplight. Other exterior features include body colored outside rear mirrors that are heated and power fold and come with turn signals, rear fog lamps, roof rails. While it may be too bold for some taste, it can't be denied that Tucson will stand out on the road and even just parked. Bold may not be the word that comes to mind when describing the Tucson interior. Elegant, minimalist, posh may be better. Also, roomy, as it can sit five adults comfortably in leather upholstered seats. The driver's seat on the GLS Plus power adjusts and features lumbar support. The driver's seat is well bolstered. The leather-covered steering wheel manually tilts and telescopes and comes with buttons and switches for the audio as well as cruise control. Hyundai describes the dash design concept as akin to a waterfall, everything falling smoothly down. The instrument cluster is displayed on what looks like a freestanding 10.25-inch tablet. Hyundai also attempts to integrate the infotainment display and automatic air conditioning display and controls into one smooth and clutter-free front console. Most controls done by touch on the display except for power and audio volume and tune file controls that use scroll wheels and the temperature mode controls which use toggle switches. The use of multi-air vents cools the cabin more evenly. The infotainment system comes with an 8-inch touchscreen display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, customizable voice recognition, six speakers that include two tweeters and Bluetooth. Charging ports include wireless charger and two charging USB ports. There is also a 12-volt accessory socket. Standard comfort and convenience features include starts with smart key and push-button start and include overhead console with lamp, room and mood lamps, sun visors with mirror and illumination, center console with cup holders, power windows and door locks, luggage snet and screen. Hyundai brought in two Tucson variants, the GLS Plus powered by a SmartStream D2.0 1998cc diesel engine generating 186 PS and 416 Nm of torque and the GLS powered by a SmartStream G2.0 1999cc gasoline engine putting out 156 PS and 192 Nm of torque. The diesel engine is baited to an 8-speed shift-by-wire automatic transmission with the GLS Plus getting paddle shifters. The gasoline variant comes with a 6-speed automatic transmission. The Hyundai Tucson rides on a suspension featuring the now common front McPherson struts rear multi-link combo. With this, wide comfort and handling compares well against the competition in the compact SUV segment. The brake system gets 16-inch discs on all four wheels, ventilated in front which can compare better than well against the competition, some of which still use drums in the rear. Anti-lock braking system and electronic stability control help keep driver in control, especially in inclement weather and slippery road conditions, or from mistakes from aggressive driving. Hyundai has also equipped the Tucson at least for local release, downhill brake control, hill start assist control, trailer stability assist, manual speed limiter, tire pressure monitoring system, and immobilizer. Parking is helped along by rear view monitor with dynamic guidance in front and rear parking distance warning. Standard for safety are six airbags, child safety rear door locking, anchors for child seat, and electrochromic rear view mirror. Hyundai priced the latest generation Tucson at 1.57 million pesos for the 2.0 GLS AT and 1.840 million pesos for the 2.0 GLS Plus AT. Will you spring more for diesel? Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Here in Speed Lab, it's not all about making cars go fast and more horsepower, more torque, and all of that. It's all we also do boring stuff like maintenance. Like on this 2009 Montero, it's a 10-year-old car. 
things start to happen. Noises start to come out. You hear tok 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 ting 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 ting. That's normal for pretty much any car. Anything mechanical that moves will eventually develop some sort of sound because it's wear and tear over time. Uh, we already took this car out for a test drive and from initially what we can tell, steering rack needs work because when you turn it, there's a tok 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 sound. And when you brake, there's also a clunk sound. So that means we have to check the brakes as well. It's actually, you don't have to wait for the various sounds to come out. The reason why it's called PMS is called Preventive Maintenance Service. You prevent it from happening before it happens. So, very good example. Stabilizer bushings. These normally wear out anywhere from a year to about three years, depending on the car. You don't have to wait for it to have a sound. But the bad part about being in the Philippines is, hindi pa sira yan, wag mo palitan. Thereby, there is no prevention that's happening. Pag sira na, saka mo papalitan. That is always the mentality of the Filipino people. Kasi, hindi sira, bakit ko papalitan, gastos lang yan. And then when you ask for an estimate from the CASA of the preventive maintenance schedule, they include a lot of things. Uh, let's say, stabilizer bushing, shock absorber, axle boot, CV joint, shock mounting. All of these things are not broken yet, but may about to break, will break, can possibly break. And then you get surprised of the bill. Oh, but ang dami. So it's more of a culture thing more than anything else. So if you really want a properly maintained car, even if it's not broke, you change it. <laughs> the CASA's job is to maintain your car. Maintenance means you keep it running problem free. Things like weird sounds coming from the suspension, there is already a problem. When the CASA gives you an enormous long list of things that need to be changed, it is because it is what, let's say, Honda or Toyota, the factory gives them, okay, at X number of kilometers, change this, change that, even if it's not broken, for worry-free performance for the next X number of kilometers or miles. This may look very daunting to almost anyone. Your car is in pieces. But that's the thing about cars. As long as it moves, it will break down, it will wear out. And the only real way to tell if a part is really worn out is not just by looking at it. You have to take it out and test it. A very good example is this one. Most everybody knows this is a shock absorber. This is what happens to a shock when it's not working. I mean, it looks okay. There's no leak. Physically and visually, everything looks fine, but... <laughs> you should be able to push it down easily and it should go up. Well, I can't push it down and it don't go up no more. So, it is absorbing no shock in your car. So, the result is actually matalbog yung koche or matagtag. In this case, it's matagtag because it is resisting the motion of the spring. So this shock is effectively throw away. Other small things that get broken are almost always rubber related. The metal itself, let's say this one, this is the wall joint. Itong bakal hindi naman nasisira to eh. I mean, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine, overall this is fine. But the bearing inside here is actually a cup and a ball. Over time, pag gumagalaw, it wears out and gets loose. This, I should not be able to move by hand. Hindi dapat malambot to, dapat matigas to. And then, the easiest way to figure it out, if there's something wrong with it, you hit it really hard like this. This happens when you steer the car. So in this Montero's case, sabi niya, pag todo liko, may tumutunog na, tok, tok, tok. Chances are, it's this one. So that's another thing. Small non-critical items are like this one, steering axle boot. If this is still on the car, physically, hey, okay naman ah. But only pag tinanggal mo, dun mo malalaman na punit na pala. And oil, grease will leak out through here. And pag nawawalan ng grasa, umiingay yung pyesa. So we're changing it with a new one. Fresh and new. No hole, no nothing. Other items that have ball joints like this one, this is also part of the steering assembly. This is also soft. I should not be able to move this by hand, so... Should not make that sound also. So, tapo na rin to. We have replacement parts for pretty much anything uh, available on the market. If the CASA has it, there's always an equivalent replacement part. Cheaper than CASA, 
pretty much just as good also. Other things that we look out for are items that get worn out, like here, brake shoe. This is especially true for drum brake cars because it is behind the brake shoe, as in, hindi mo nakikita. Part of periodic maintenance actually involves taking this entire thing out and physically checking the brake shoe here. This, by the way, is already, we replaced the brake shoe and this is the original size, ganun kakapal. This is what your brake shoe is now, less than half the size already, so palit na. And among other things, that brake rotors for the front. As you notice, this is very shiny right now because this has been refaced. This is the cheaper way to do it. You can actually reface rotors up to about two times before they get too thin to reface and then you have to replace it because this does get worn down over time. So this is still fine. Most of the kalampag and other things that you mo while driving is pretty much suspension related. So periodic maintenance means visually checking each and every part by a shop that knows what it's doing. And then if needed be, take out the part to physically inspect it and test like what we just did a while ago to see if it's still working as it should. This also why if you delay periodic maintenance and then wait until na medyo madami ng sira, when you ask for an estimate from the casa or another shop, mahaba yung listahan. Eh, madaming sira eh. And can you tipid yung paggawa? Of course you can. No, gagawin mo lang to. Ayaw mo to kasi mahal. Ayaw mo rin to kasi mahal. Ito, tsaka na to. But just like a person, you cure one ailment, the rest of the ailments are still there. Madadamay at madadamay yan. Your brake pad is actually here. Manipis na rin nga eh. That's less than half. New brake pads are like this. Old brake pad versus new brake pad. This is what's left on the old brake pad. This is what a new brake pad is. So, times two. Yes, they are now ceramic brakes. There are no more metallic brakes. There are no more asbestos brakes as some of them old timers may remember. So, it's pretty much this one. They're all ceramic now. So, the noise and other weird noises are pretty much a thing of the past already. <laughs> This is what's the inside of your drum brake. Looks pretty daunting na parang, ooh, ang dami naman yan, ano yan? This is the one that does the handbrake. This is the piston. Pag tumapak ka ng preno, fluid goes here, bumubuka to para itulak dun sa brake shoe. That's what actually does the braking. This thing here is the handbrake. Yung ratatatat, narinig mo, ito yun. <laughs> here, fresh delivery from KYB Philippines, we have set of new shocks for the Montero. This, by the way, is a KYB XLG. XLG is their line of OEM quality replacement shock absorbers. And they are most normally known as KYB color black. Very simple. And it has to look exactly the same as your original shock absorber. Kailangan pareho itsura nito. Pag hindi pareho itsura, hindi papasok sa kotse. Same height, same everything. Remember the shock where it is so hard Push down <coughs> and don't go up. Your new shock absorber should be fairly easy to push down and goes back up. This one will give you back the right comfort in your car. Okay, our maintenance on the Montero is done. We've replaced a bunch of items in the suspension, most notably the shock absorbers, uh, the rubber bushings underneath, stabilizer, the links and some of you maintenance items like axle boot it's torn we replace that and almost all the kalampag and noise and tick 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 tock 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 sounds are not present anymore i won't say it drives like brand new but it definitely drives a lot better than before it came into the shop and had all of this done then after everything we put it on the dyno again and then we retuned it so we got 200 horses uh, not bad for a 10 year old car so once again, like the name says, PMS Preventive Maintenance Service. You prevent the, it from breaking down. So bago masira, palitan. Wag yung Pilipino way na pagsira at kapapalitan. So here at Speed Lab, we not only do uh, racing and performance stuff, we actually 
do maintenance also, the boring things. Uh, change oil, spark plug, engine overhaul we have to do also. Because first and foremost, if you want more power from your car, you have to make sure that your car is running well and in good condition first. You can't make a car more powerful if there's a bunch of problems wrong with it. So we have to address that and that's what we do also. Anything mechanical as far as engine and suspension related is concerned, we also do that. Have a problem with your car, weird noises, bring it over to the shop so we can test drive it and most importantly we can hear what the sounds are because you can message us through Facebook also but saying something like May ingay yung koche ko at may kalampag does not really help us in diagnosing what the noise is. So it's better to bring the car in for us to see, test drive. You drive it, you let us hear what the noises are. And then together we can look at the car and we can point out, oh, ito, 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 this, this, this is the potential problem. This is what we see, ito may tulo, ito may tagas, and all of that. So at least you get a first hand view and what exactly is wrong with your car. And to know that, okay, these are the things that I need to replace. That's our feature in Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this episode of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. In honor of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.